Welcome back to Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. I'm Jacob, and this video covers optical blind spots. It's another aeromedical topic requested by viewers, and it's incredibly important because if you can't see a hazard while flying, obviously you could have an accident and hit it. Um, be sure to hit like and subscribe and leave a comment if you're enjoying the channel so far, but let's get started. Now, there are two distinct blind spots that exist in the human eye. The first is what's known as a physiological blind spot. Now, the physiological blind spot, also called a uh, scotoma, it's quite literally a certain point in your field of vision where you just cannot see. It's hard to notice with both eyes open, but with one closed or blocked or partially blocked, you could have a portion of your field of view where your brain literally just guesses what's there. Now, to test this, get a sheet of paper, draw a couple of circles on it on each side about six to eight inches apart, and you can test where your blind spot is. So say, close your left eye and focus on the left circle. Move the paper towards and away from your face and watch how the right circle disappears. That's your blind spot. Um, you can also cover your eyes, flip-flop to the other circle, move it up and forward, and you can see the other eye's blind spot. Once again, this is your physiological blind spot. Um, this is how it works. So kind of top-down uh, view of your head. Say that's your, your head right here with your eyes. Let's say both eyes are fixed looking forward like this. Um, so the optic nerve connects to your retina in your eyes, leaving an absence of cone or rod cells. So if you don't know much about cone or rod cells, I recommend checking out my night vision video for more detail on those. But basically where this optic nerve connects, we'll just say right around here at the back of the eye, there's going to be a lap or an absence of photoreceptive cells that leads to a blind spot about 12 degrees to 15 degrees offset. And that's going to be offset to, say, the outside or, say, towards your ear. Uh, so it's going to look something like this. This is where your blind spot's going to be. It's going to be a small little oval-shaped uh, blind spot. It's roughly 5.5 degrees to 7.5 degrees oval-shaped blind spot to the offset side of the ear. Um, at 100 feet away, this blind spot can hide roughly something the size of a barrel. At 1,000 feet away, uh, you could pop possibly miss something that is uh, the size of a car um, with this blind spot. But before we talk about compensation, we'll talk about the next blind spot, and that is the night blind spot. Now when you hear night blind spot, some people just commonly think, oh, if this is night blind spot, this should be the day, day blind spot. That's not the case. Um, this is just wrong. So the blind spot, uh, or the physiological blind spot, is always present, daytime and nighttime. Um, it's always there It's based on where that optic nerve connects. Uh, the night blind spot, blind spot is only present at night, so you're not going to have this night blind spot at the day at night, or at the daytime, only at the night. Um, but this is going to be right in the center of your vision. It's going to look something like this. So for the same diagram, we have our eyes looking forward it's gonna look something like this. Right here in the very center of your vision, you're gonna have that blind spot. I'm trying to make that as scale as possible, but this is gonna be roughly five degrees to 10 degrees in the absolute center of your vision is gonna be your night blind spot. Once again, only present at night. Uh, you can't see any sort of detail um, at night with this, so try it. If it's uh, completely dark outside, go outside for a little bit, let your eyes adjust, but stare directly at something, not lit, so no lights around that, but just stare directly so at something, and you'll notice that it will disappear from your field of vision if you stare directly at it. Now, this occurs because there's a high concentration of cones in the very center of your field of vision. This, was, this is what gives you... Um, your your day vision, your high visual acuity, your color vision, it's, an, it's a concentration of cone cells that really give you this, this sharp detail. But because there's so many cone cells, there's not enough rod cells, which results in a night blind spot. Um, it's an absence of rods on the fovea centralis. Uh, this is what gives you, um, you know, really good day vision, but a, a lack in vision at nighttime. Now, there's still cone cells, um, here in this spot, so like if you were to look directly at a dim light at night, you're going to be able to see it, but in the absence of light, you're not going to be able to see, and it's going to be a blind spot. Um, so it's really good vision in the daytime, but you're going to lose that central vision at nighttime. Um, so this leads to how do you compensate, or how do you overcome? 
Glad you asked, there's a few different ways. First and foremost, anytime you fly, you should be always scanning. That is, don't have a fixed head position. You should always be looking around, left, right, up, down, where you're going, you know, out your peripherals. Always be looking around, move your head. Don't just have a fixed head position. Um, this is gonna defeat both of these blind spots. If you're constantly looking around, you're less likely to miss something. So once again, this could be just a, a simple left, right, or you could have a more complex scan pattern of say an S-shaped scan pattern where you're zigzagging around. This could be an x shape pattern where you're up, down, and kind of making crosses like that, or a sideways Z type pattern, whatever it is that, that you want to do. Just have some sort of scan pattern. Another way to compensate is uh, moving objects or clutter off the cockpit dash, like if you have suction mounts for your GoPros or a GPS, stuff like that, but uh, remove the clutter. The reason uh, you do this is you could have something cluttering your field of vision where one eye can't see because of clutter on the cockpit and an object could appear in a physiological or night blind spot and the other eye doesn't see it. So if you reduce the clutter, you give both eyes a chance, you're less likely to, meet, uh, to miss something. Uh, lastly, and this is going to be a compensation technique for just the night blind spot, is off-center viewing. Once again, at night, you don't have that middle of your, your vision, so if you off-center view, look slightly offset from it, um, you don't, you're not going to lose all that detail. So say I'm landing to a field in the middle of the night, um, I don't have my night vision goggles or something like that. I don't necessarily want to look directly at my landing zone. I want to have scanning and off-center viewing to keep the visual acuity of this spot that I want to land to instead of staring directly at it. Uh, it's less likely I'm going to miss something. Maybe there's a tree or a bush or an obstacle in the LZ that I don't want to hit. Uh, but hopefully you've got some sort of night vision device because once again, if it's night vision, then it's going to be activating the cone cells. You're not going to miss it. Uh, it's really just night, uh, that night blind spot in the absence of light that you're going to have that. Um, but that's about all I have for this video. If you enjoyed it or you learned something new, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Also leave a comment below. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, once again, if you're still curious on cones or rods, check out my video about the, uh, the, the pilot night vision. That's going to outline it a little bit more. But thanks for watching. As always, I'm Jacob, and this is Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. Safe flight.